Drew Jordy has been recently cancelled for one joke about Andrew Tate, which earned him a ban from Twitch and the termination of his major sponsorship deals by PokerStars, MyProtein, and Gymshark. But True Jordy, whose real name is Brian Davis, has always been known for having a big mouth. The big mouth that has attacked and pummeled many more casualties than we can keep track of. And here are his many victims. Nile Ranger, the original victim of True Jordy's 2013 viral video. A True Jordy's view on Nile Ranger took True Jordy from zero subscribers to millions. However, he couldn't have cared less about subscribers when he made that video. Nile had gone after some section of the Newcastle fanbase for booing the team after what they felt was a terrible performance by the players. And he would certainly regret that decision as the years rolled by. Because it was his post that sparked something in True Geordie. And frankly, you can almost see it on the face of True Geordie, seated about to start that very video. I'm going to destroy somebody today. And that person was Nile Ranger. Just take a look at this intro and tell us it's not absolutely bonkers. A message to Niall Ranger here. Yeah. Newcastle United player. I say player. I've, I use that term loosely. Pond life would probably be a better fucking uh, term for the little cunt. True Geordie wanted to really hurt someone with words. And Niall was just primely set up to get it. You've brought nothing but shame on me. You've got no fucking talent, right? You sucked the fucking scout off back in the day. Basically got your fucking little deal. Now you're sitting driving your fucking flash car in your flash house, right? But we don't give a shit. Having money doesn't make you a good footballer. It doesn't make a difference to us. We don't respect that. We know you're just along for the ride. Because truth be told, you're a fucking Division 2 player, man. League 2 player, League 3 conference player. If you're lucky, you fuck all, man. You wouldn't brighten in whole Valvian, man. You couldn't even do sh fuck all against them and they shit. You're nothing, man. So I need to get this through this little twat's head, right? Don't fucking become a footballer if you don't like being booed, you fucking moron. You will notice True Jordy didn't even ask people to subscribe at the end of the video. He was just pissed and came online to give a piece of his mind. Actually, not, but to pour out his frustration to anyone who cared to listen. Come 2018. True Jordy had blown up and became this big thing, and Niall was now struggling. So Niall reached out to True Jordy, and he brought Niall on his show. They talked things over and ended on this note. I really, really, really hope that if you do get a chance that we don't hear he's being fired for being nah, late again. Newcastle United. Niall was only part of a bigger problem. Newcastle United. This team, his pain and the cannon that would shoot him into fame in the football community. Oh boy, did Newcastle get smothered in pure venom from True Geordie. Good lord. These players, right? Do you know how shit you are, you useless gun? Do you know what a useless sack of shit you all are? All the Newcastle players, you're a bunch of useless, sackless piles of shit. Do you know that? So bad to the point of growing to hate the club. That's how angry Newcastle made the man. Poor Jew, I gave him a lot of shit, but he would get more out of them than that than this useless cunt Gava would have. But even he would look back at his journey from his original channel, Football Fan 533, FIFA Gaming, and the need to rebrand when Newcastle eventually relegated to the championship, and conclude that Newcastle may not have delivered any trophy yet, or even given him much joy. But it opened the door to a much more worthwhile success. Mike Ashley. True, Jordy loves Newcastle United and has supported them for so long. So it's unsurprising that apart from Newcastle players, former Newcastle United owner Mike Ashley is often the focus of True Jordy's heavy criticisms. Newcastle coaches too, but since they were getting replaced, it was hard to keep track of them. Unlike Ashley, who held the owner position for years. It seems like Niall and Ashley were birds of the same feather in True Jordy's book. Because what the heck is well, this well, intro? Well, well, you little bastard. You've been exposed now, haven't you, Mike? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I made a mistake. You're fucking right. You made a mistake, you little bitch. I'm absolutely sick of Mike Ashley. Right? The government had asked people to stay home because the country, actually the world, was experiencing a medical emergency. And Mike Ashley decided to keep his employees working and his stores open despite the government warning. It didn't paint him in a good light. As a famous business guy in the UK, Ashley has had a history of being a harsh boss, even in his other businesses. 
This report from The Guardian says quite a lot. There had been 110 ambulance callouts to his main warehouse site in just over three years as workers suffered chest pains, stroke, injury, and five births or miscarriages. Indeed, this was perfect for True Geordie, who let Ashley have it as viciously as possible. True Geordie seems to have a reservoir of deep, deep resentment for people who have the ability to make the needed decision, but don't. Football head coaches and club owners especially. Especially when it's someone who has become the source of your pain for the past 10 or so years. It becomes really easy. So why was he taking a piss at Ashley? We're on lockdown here and only in the event that you sell, you know, necessities like food or medicines, etc. Can you stay open in this current national medical emergency? Well, Mike Ashley decided, no, no, the rules don't apply to me. I'm going to do whatever the fuck I like, mate. And does he let the world know that he's pissed? As if we didn't all know, but you know, like I say, it's one thing when he's running a football club badly and, and he's treating his staff like shit, but when he's literally willing to risk everyone in his path just for an extra couple of quid, there can be no doubt now. So I don't want anyone ever again to defend this prick to me. Fuck off if you're planning on it, I don't want to fucking know. Mike Ashley is a cunt and that's all I've got to say. Logan Paul, the superstar YouTuber, boxer, wrestler, actor, and businessman, among many other things, has also locked horns with Drew Jordy on two separate occasions. Back in 2018, Logan became notorious for having gone to a suicide forest in Japan. In the forest, Logan and his team find a dead body because, of course, this is a suicide forest. True Geordie's reaction to Logan's video was initially that of a sensible person trying to understand why people would be so stupid. But it soon became much more heartbreaking. True Geordie's reaction to Logan's actions became one of just pure hurt. Just pain. You wanted to fight a dead body. That was the moment for you where you were like, yes, get in. Do you know how many people have found dead bodies in such a way and being traumatized and upset because they had their loved ones, anything like that. And there's you fucking hoping for it. You fucking sick little fucking freak. Apologies from Logan Paul to the world kind of closed that chapter and everyone moved on. Months later, True Geordie would be at loggerheads with Logan again when Logan rejected the notion of True Geordie moderating the press conference for the fight between Logan and KSI. KSI had happily accepted True Geordie as a neutral moderator, but Logan was not having it. Perhaps because he was still reeling from the demolishing True Geordie had served him in his reaction video to the forest issue. Eventually, Logan called True Geordie and had a long chat. It's unfortunate that that's how we have to get information across to each other. That's why I, I just wanted to call you and let you know okay. where I was coming from and how I feel. Which brought True Geordie to this safe conclusion. He manned up, spoke to me on the phone and apologized and gave me a lot of respect. And I appreciate that. And as someone who has been affected by suicide, the way he spoke about his regret over that video, it seemed very sincere. That ended their beef. True Geordie ran commentary on the fight and even Logan was on his podcast recently. KSI. You've probably wondered why we're talking about boxing and beef on YouTube. And KSI's name has not found its way into this video. Well, True Jordy has no beef with KSI. But he did make a suggestive remark one time. And this one happened while True Jordy was still with The Zone. KSI had shown class, defeating rapper Swarms and Mexican boxer Luis Alcaraz Pineda in one night in front of a bumper crowd at London's O2 Arena. Even at that moment, KSI would catch a stray when True Jordy said, People who know JJ or KSI know it's not the first time he's done two in one night. We can assure you that people who heard it are looking at KSI in a new light. Eddie Hearn Eddie Hearn is someone else people started seeing a different version of when True Jordy hopped on his drug case. In October 2022, people were looking forward to one of the biggest fights in England. Chris Eubank Jr. versus Conor Ben. But the match was called off by the British Boxing Board because Conor Ben tested positive for a banned substance named Clomiphene. But despite the controversy, Eddie Hearn wanted to continue with the match. Here is where True Geordie felt the need to bring out his deadly arsenal. Being honest, so here we are. Eddie Hearn, I feel like he's hit a bit of a, a rock bottom moment. It's pretty bad for him. And I don't say that in a gloaty way. I'm not happy. This is going to be a really honest critique of the way I say things, but I'm not out to 
enjoy a, a moment of difficulty for another guy who I have respect for. Even adding this concerning Eddie Hearn. He's made a few little mistakes and I'm not putting all the blame on him. I'm sure there's other factors going on in the background. Some of his ideas of how to build his own haven't worked as, as well as he'd hoped. And clearly that's why the model is the way it is right now. And Connor Ben, who was at the center of the whole controversy, couldn't escape the bombardment either. So fighters often can register to be a part of order. Apparently, Connor Ben forgot last year. Oh. Actually, the issue that True Jordy had against Hearn was his joining the circus of corruption that the boxing sport had become. Misfit boxing. Well, this one trickles down from Dear Eddie Hearn. The zone and boxing promotions, really. A combination True Jordy was once working hand in hand with. In fact, at one point, fans thought True Jordy might be accepting a fight after being called out by Tempo Arts, who was hyped after his win over Godson. Now, things may be getting worse by the day. True Jordy's frustration on X during a live stream captured this downward spiral. We're seeing a progressive decline of misfits. Like, we're just all, oh, you know what I mean? This has been trash tonight. These main card fights have been have been crap. The chat between these three is absolutely shit. I'm sorry, it's shit. This is fucking shit. There's no analysis. There's nothing that's worth listening to right now. It's absolutely shit. That was a small part of a longer live stream where True Jordy said some other positive things about Misfit 007. And the idea that he's done with the outfit is not entirely correct. Harry Maguire. What's correct is how angry True Jordy would be if Harry Maguire were a Newcastle player. Harry Maguire has become a football meme since joining Manchester United due to his lack of ability. On his football podcast, The Kickoff, True Jordy and his crew often make him the target of silly jokes. However, during the 2023 transfer window, he was very vocal about how he felt about Maguire. When the issue of Maguire's possible transfer to West Ham came up, True Jordy took his time to rip his fellow countrymen to shred. I think he's absolutely useless. The amount of individual errors he has committed at Manchester United, where it's a lack of concentration, horrendous on the ball, yeah. he gives the ball away in such clumsy ways, it's almost a record. When you have more of the ball at a top club, you get challenged less. He will be tested more, and the more he gets tested, the more of these individual errors will happen. He will be exposed at West Ham. Oof, Harry, that's gotta hurt. Tyson Fury. Even the heavyweights, too? <laughs> yes, True Jordy has the admiration of his followers, not just because of his big mouth, but his bravery, too. The last minutes of the 17 minute long True Jordy interview with Tyson Fury was just pure <laughs> chaos. True Jordy has said he's a genuine admirer of the WBC and the ring heavyweight titles holder, so fans weren't surprised to see Fury on the show. The interview began on a positive note, and there was this moment when True Jordy asked Fury if he had watched the KSI fight. A KSI's last fight? Did you, uh, did you say it? I didn't, I'm not gonna lie. Let's not forget that True Jordy loves and supports YouTube boxing, but True Jordy says nothing. So for the rest of the interview, True Jordy pressed Fury on his decision to fight fighters whom he was clearly better than. This Chisora fight, I think, is rubbing people up the wrong way is because it, it doesn't feel like you're doing your usual thing that we love you for, which is it's not a challenge for you. What is a challenge, though? Getting an opponent's a challenge. Mm. <laughs> That's yeah. the challenge. Fury must have believed True Jordy was trying to criticize Chisora and the coming fight. And perhaps that's what he was doing. Then Fury took on debut boxer Nganu, and all hell was let loose. Watch a gleeful True Jordy describe what happened. Bullied. Tyson Fury. I'm gonna say it again. Bullied Tyson Fury. All of that chat about big Tyson thinking he's this big man, looking down on everyone else around him. When you kick people on the way up, we're gonna remember when you fall. And that's what the day is all about. Andrew Tay. Top G and victimhood are two things you think you will never see together. That's the magic of True Jordy. Now, you may wonder how the paths of these two ever crossed. During an interview with James English, Tate explained how the feud with Drew Jordy started. He started beef with me when I had a Twitter account long ago when I had a webcam company and he was saying that all the girls who work for me are and all these things. And I just replied to him saying, listen, there's a whole bunch of girls who saw you calling them and you don't know who these people are and that's quite misogynistic and sad. You shouldn't be calling a bunch of people you don't know names. They have children and some of them have husbands and you don't know who they are. So it kind of started there. So he started it. He was 
particularly aggressive, thought he was a tough guy. And then only a week later, all those screenshots came out. So I had to, I had to mention it. Like, come on, like it's, when God gives you a gift like that, you're like, okay. So I ran with that for a while. The revenge was a dish Tate gladly served cold. And boy, did True Jordy get his handed to him as Tate and his brother Tristan went at him for nearly two minutes. Obviously, a bruised True Jordy could take in other things, but not Tate having the last belly aching laugh at his expense. I'm asking to put nose up my What's wrong with you? You know, the thing is, though, the grow thing, up! The, the thing is, you know what's crazy? So, when the opportunity came up during Tate's allegation of rape and eventual arrest, True Jordy played the investigator, letting viewers in on the news as it unfolded. You can't deny that the undertones of that video weren't that of a man savoring his enemy's downfall. So, I'll leave it at that. Um, obviously, his defenders will be there in the comments, battling hard, defending the soldier of the light. Drew Jordy even got a Romanian ex-convict on his show to talk about how corrupt the Romanian justice system was and how Tate may want to bribe his way out of prison. I'll start off with what the outside uh, world are saying about this Romanian justice system. A lot of people, you know, are wondering what it'll be like for him. Is it corrupt? Can he, can he just pay his way out of this situation? Andrew Tate himself said, I'm going there because the laws are relaxed. But all that was nothing compared to what True Jordy would do on November 2022. Even though Tate seemed to be doing a good thing, like finding religion, True Jordy couldn't find a place in his heart to let the man have the win. So during a live, when a fan asked if True Jordy would fight Tate, he said this. Are you fighting Andrew Tate? Man, and oh, Andrew Tate's got God on his side oh, now. Man. There's no way Brian would win that. Um, although I would gladly blow myself over take that shit back with us. I'm just saying, if he really wants to prove it, do, do the right thing. <laughs> Let's see how about that life you really are. As, yes, although, yeah, not all Muslims. The internet was set ablaze. Racist, Islamophobic, terrible person, you get the idea, became Drew Jordy's new media tags. The backlash only became heavier when Tate responded with this. So this person is genuinely a piece of shit. And now, after me converting to Islam, he made a piece on one of his podcasts saying that I'm not true in my conversion and then insulted all Muslims. Then the Muslims blow themselves up and that I should go blow myself up. We should all blow ourselves up making racist comments about, uh, about an entire religion as if that's somehow funny. True Jordy uploaded an apology video that most people felt wasn't genuine, which wasn't very well received. He then uploaded a second one, which was better received. Despite this apology, the cascade didn't stop there. Lawrence, his friend and co-host for the True Geordie channel and The Kickoff, the football commentary podcast, left. The crew, which included Elliot, Rory, Bouvet, and Adam, also left to go start a new channel only a few months after the Islamophobia controversy. You guessed it, it's a football commentary channel. The Club. With my a straight up copy of The Kickoff. They christened it The Club. A club of traitors, more like. Even True Jordy doesn't see them ever reconciling. So True Jordy lost his livelihood, respect, fans, and even his supposed friends. The beef had now become a chaotic situation, and True Jordy has been the only person stacking the losses, while Tate seemed to have moved on. I have no real genuine beef with him. I can sit here and make fun of the guy, but beef over what? I don't really care. Conor McGregor. True Jordy too moved on to another beef. This time with his ex-idol, Conor McGregor. This began when he reacted to an awful interview by Conor at the Black Forge Inn, where it was apparent that the UFC legend was not completely put together. Now, I don't know the ins and outs of what that problem is, but the way he's speaking is worrying. This isn't me making jabs or trying to take the piss. It, I genuinely feel bad for this man right now because if there's one thing about Conor McGregor that we've always known him to be, is a fantastic speaker. Look at True Jordy's reaction to Conor's seemingly unstable state of mind. He concludes that stream saying, Hopefully we see Conor McGregor clean his act up, get himself in a better place and be the best version of himself inside the cage. And if not, even outside the cage, we don't want to see him just rambling like a madman. The strong finish by True Jordy prompted a response, of course. Conor McGregor's 42 second voice recording is probably something you should hear for yourself. Mr. Estrogen, what's happening? 
Five it's Who the, who the f- are you? You little Bourne's victim looking thing. Fuck me, man. Who scalded you with a kettle? You fat f- You fat nobody. You little feminine f- you of a thing. I f- yeah. Keep my name out of your mouth, you stupid cunt. Sick of, sick of seeing your fat born face. Scaldy fat estrogen head. Oh my god, you can't understand what I'm saying, can you not, pal? You've got subtitles under the thing saying exactly what I'm saying. So what are you saying, you little fat no-name? Burn victim, right? Well, True Jordy is not one to be outdone. He tears into Connor, saying some crazy stuff about his abilities, and makes a point of the size difference when he says, Literally, I'm bigger and stronger than you in every single conceivable way. Women bigger than you, pal. You see, Connor doesn't know what it's like to shop a big and tall. He has those custom suits fitted just nicely for his tiny little legs, doesn't he? Those skinny little brittle legs that snap like twigs. And he's so confident that he even leaves this offer on the table. If you want to do a charity fight, anything, MMA, boxing, I don't really give a shit because I'm literally a giant compared to you. We'll donate the money to Burns victims. How about that? Anytime, anywhere, any place. I really don't care. Someone needs to shut that f***ing hole in your face. And no, he wasn't finished. He even got his hands on a list of controversies Connor has been in over the years. While everyone is waiting on Connor's reply and whether there'll be a fight or not, True Geordie is being given the win concerning this particular beef. But because True Geordie went harder, he wins. You know what I mean? If you, if you come out there... You, True Geordie's not sending a 60 second voice message on Twitter to win this argument. He's constructing a big video and that's always going to win. Now, you know True Geordie has a big mouth and he's definitely not afraid to use it, especially if you end up on his bad side. Do you know any more victims of True Geordie? Let us know in the comments section.